What's up guys, Specstar here today with my draft recap for Season 2 of the UML. And we just com completed our draft, well, I hesitate there because I just completed my draft. There's still some people picks left. Um, my draft went a little bit shorter because I didn't take 12 Pokemon. I instead opted to just grab 11 and have a higher points per Pokemon invested in it. And also, I had a round off because I did franchise a Pokemon, and yeah. So, for those of you who don't know, UNL, it's a points-based draft. You have 120 points, you draft between 10, 12, you, I mean, you can do less if you want to, but generally between 10 and 12 Pokemon, and spend 120 points to get them. And I decided to spend my 120 on 11 Pokemon, as I mentioned. You get 30 points to assign Z capability to Pokemon. So you can take, after the draft, you can take 30 points worth of Pokemon. And up to three of them assign Z capabilities. And that's basically how it works. If any of you are interested in spectating the league, just... Let me know, and I can get you an invite link to the Discord server. Um, I should have my videos uploaded for this for the season, all season through, and probably quite a few team builders in there too. Although I don't always do them; mostly try to save them for the more important battles. Um, so let me just dive into this team. My first mod here is Latios Mega, who we had last season, and we franchised it. And shout out to all the haters, because people were saying that it sh that it, wouldn't, it wasn't worth the 19 points, which was the, the highest points tier. Uh, there's a few in 18, but it was the lone 19. And people were dissing on it for that, but I think it's 100% worth it. I think it's... Uh, cut above the other Pokemon that were allowed, and I'm excited to bring it back for this season. It didn't have a bad season last season, but I didn't do too much because I'm, I had a lot of competition with it for the offensive roles. Having Blaziken, having Protein Greninja, having Zero Aura, it really had a hard time shining as did a few other things. Blaziken really underperformed itself. But, again, I'm excited to let this Pokemon shine on its own accord here. And as you guys can see, it can be Dragon Dance like this. Jolly gets up to 359 attack, and that's insane for what it is. Uh, you can also make the thing modest, and you can put that all the way over there and get 460 special attack, which Draco Meteor is just a nuke. It has decent bulk, actually, and you can, of course, throw Roost on it, or Recover, and all that fun stuff. And it's a Pokemon that I'm excited to bring. Like I've said, I can run Dragon Dance, Calm Mind, I can just drop nukes on things. I can... You guys know that I'm crazy enough to run bulkier utility-type sets on it. And really, it should... It shouldn't have a chance to shine this season. So my next pick is Heatran. And Heatran is just a great Pokemon to come in on the Ice types, the Steel types, and the Fairy types that beat Latios. And I wanted a Pokemon that pairs well with Latios, and I was definitely willing to grab Heatran in round one to get that pairing, even though generally it doesn't go that early. I didn't want to risk losing it, especially having Mega Latios there, and thinking 13 points is a pretty damn good price for it. Um, I didn't really consider using it as my Z user, but uh, I thought it would have been my smartest choice for my second Z user, but I went with something else that I thought would be more fun, and make for a little bit more entertainment. I've got... Um, there's also, I should say, the potential for Latios to come in on the ground moves, the fighting moves, the water moves, anything Heatran doesn't like, Latios deals with, and vice versa. This thing is so versatile, I've found I have a lot of experience using this Pokemon, 
can run things like AV on it, you can put an air balloon. I've run Choice Band on it before <laughs> for a T-Tar, which I knew was going to be a salt vest to deal with it. And you can run Specs, Scarf, all sorts of things with this, really, sky's the limit. <laughs> So my next pick, I went and I took my low tech, and that's something that just goes very well with both Heatran and Latios. A lot of the things that can rate them both, like Excadrill, for example, things like that, a lot of them can't take on my low tech very well. And my low tech is just a great wall because it has a lot of answers for status and a great deal of bulk. It's got that insane special defense stat, and of course you can always with the burn damage nerf, put a flame orb on it to get that marvel scale boost in its defense and just make it nearly impossible to break on the physical side. The thing just sponges and I was definitely willing to grab the creme de la creme of water walls here. I thought this is definitely a Pokemon I couldn't have waited on further because my low tech will always go early and I thought, I thought even in the second round, it's pretty early, but no problem grabbing it there, not risking getting sniped on it. And my next pick here, I went and I took Mandibuzz, and I'm just trying to establish here a very strong defensive core. Mandibuzz also gives me an answer to Dark and Ghost for Latios. It's basically pairing well with Heatran, especially taking in those ground moves and such, and also my low tick. I just wanted to get as bulky and strong of a defensive core as I could there, so I could afford to spend a lot more on purely offensive mods, like you can see back here, and on Latios. I also got myself a good defogger, so I could take some pressure off of Latios having to defog, which is always nice. Mandibuzz is good because it gets options like Whirlwind, Taunt, and Foul Play to deal with Setup, which is always great for such a fat Pokemon. It also gets U-Turn so it can keep up momentum. It's really just a, a nice little defensive Pokemon. Generally, I try to stay away from ones that can be a little bit too much of Setup fodder, but... Mandibuzz definitely does not have that problem, and it helps me with any sort of setup the team may face. My next pick here, I went and I brought back Amoongus in the fourth round. I had to do it. After all the work Amoongus did in Season 1, I, it actually had its price increase from 10 to 11 because of the amount it did. And with it sitting there, I just had to go and grab it back. <laughs> Pairs well with... Milotic, of course, it pairs well with Mandibuzz, as Mandibuzz takes in the Psychic moves, and generally Mandibuzz is going to take Flying moves to the Plum, even though it doesn't resist, it's more of a de facto resist, and it has Milotic to deal with Ice moves, and basically its weaknesses are covered well enough, it gives me a, another good answer to Grass, it gives me a better answer than I had to Water, and basically just short out my defensive core there. I knew after taking that with the three walls I got here that I was pretty good and I'm free to go ahead and grab another offensive mon like Weavile. And Weavile is sitting there in the fifth round was just incredibly tempting to me. Um, with Latios, it's always great to have a nice Pursuit Trapper to take out any sort of psychics or ghosts that give it problems. Weavile helps a lot with my speed tiers and gives me a nice 125 speed, which of course is nothing to scoff at. It has a nice priority in Ice Shard, which I didn't have in my first 5 mods. And it also gives me another Sweeper, which I mostly just had in Latios. If this thing gets up a Sword Sands, it becomes incredibly dangerous, of course. And I did briefly consider this as a Z-user, but I thought I had other options that were a little bit better to me, or more attractive at least for my taste. So, uh, on to them I guess. And speaking of, my next pick here was Tapu Lele, and that's going to be not Psychic Surge Tapu Lele, but 
telepathy lele. So, telepathy lele is an interesting topic because generally it's not a thing you see in leagues. It's not something anyone has much experience with as it hasn't been released yet. But it's something I'm excited to try out. It has uh, it gives me a nice fairy type to round off a fairy steel dragon core, and it's got some awesome coverage. I wanted to try it out as a Z user because I thought it would be a lot of fun to try. Uh, one of the th sets I want to try is putting on a Psychium Z and then getting my Z Psychic Terrain. If I can't get my Psychic Surge, I can still go for Z Psychic Terrain. And for those of you who don't know, what Z Psychic Terrain does is, of course, it sets up the train and it also increases my speed. So I increase both my power and my speed. I can try things like uh, pummeling on this, the Fidenium Z. I can go for my shattered, sh my shattered psyche, all that fun, fun stuff. I just thought Lele would be a cool pick here. Of course, it has a lot of options not involving Z, like Scarf and Salt Vest. And with my next Pokemon here, Kartana, it's going to be. Lele is going to have to be very well acquainted with its non Z options because Kartana likes itself some Z moves. And Kartana was my next pick. Uh, I thought I was able to round off my team so well with my first seven mons that I had the luxury to make a big spending on a Pokemon that didn't really go too well with the team, but just gave me some power and made my team a lot more difficult to prep for. Of course, Kartana is such a dangerous Z user. It can not only just clean and get that big attack boost from its beast boost, with 507 max special attack, so you go up to 760 something with a one boost. Or of course you can go with that timid set to get a speed boost, which is you make the speed max and then you go for no attack and then you get 21, or not 21, it was 19, what am I thinking? You get 19 attack EVs, or IVs, and you will get a boost in your speed so you can sword stance and then get both speed and attack boost and the thing becomes so dangerous. Um, the grass and steel type isn't exactly the greatest type ever made but it has that great sacred sword coverage which helps with what the grass and steel doesn't touch. Of course knockoff can be nice too and of course the potential goes beyond just Z move sets. Scarf is great, Band is great. Assault Vest so I can maybe take a Caterpiece in Power Fire. And that's going to be about that for that Pokemon. My next pick I went here and I grabbed Piloswine. And Piloswine does a few things for me. He gives me another Rocks user which I really could use. And it gives me my Electric Immunity. And Piloswine's a pretty good mod, especially for 5 points. Um, I think it's a little bit dangerous. Um, it has that, of course, amazing stab. It has a great deal of bulk, actually, when you throw an Eevee Light on it. You can get that defense up pretty high. Here, you get it up to 284, and then with the Eevee Light, that's in the 400s, probably like 430-ish. So, really, the thing can take us some damn hits. And with its typing, it's pretty nice, and I definitely want to have another source of rock. So, Palosone is a pretty easy choice for me there at 5. And with my next pick, I went and I took Sock, and Sock is a Pokemon I think is very underrated. Sock is one of my favorite tier 4s, and I thought for 6 points it was a very good deal. Uh, I'm a big fan of Sock. You can put Scarf on it, which is pretty damn good against offensive teams. You can have Sturdy, which means that you basically you can deal with certain types of setup sweepers easier. And of course, you can put a band on this thing, and it just breaks with close combat, knockoff, and ice punch. Whatever takes close combat does not take ice punch and knockoff from a banded sock. And it has a pretty damn good attack stat, going up to a 383. So, 
that late in the draft for that cheap of a price is just something I couldn't resist anymore. And my last pick here is my uh, <laughs> my final Z user, and that's going to be Swoobat. And <laughs> Swoobat's an interesting little Pokemon. It helps my speed tiers for two points. There weren't many good two point options, but I thought this would be fun to try. It gets this ability called Symbol, which is going to take moves like Calm Mind and Sega and plus one, plus one, I get plus two, plus two. I can do it with Charge Beam, which is pretty interesting. Um, gets Roost, Defog, all that fun stuff. I could even be a crazy ass person and put Trick Room on it. Knock Off, Magic Coat, some interesting options with it. And it even gets the ability Unaware, which it's very matchup specific, but I'm hoping I find some sort of purpose for it just because I think that'd be cool to do since I've only ever seen this thing running simple. And it's a little dangerous niche for two points, and I thought that late it would be a great last pick for two points. I did also consider Articuno, which I think is a very good Pokemon, very underrated, but I didn't want to have another rock weakness that big because my forms of hazard control aren't necessarily as great as I'd like them to be, but my team also isn't very rock weak, so there's kind of that trade-off, but with Articuno it becomes a little bit more of a problem. So I decided to go for Swoobat instead, and the rest is history, I guess. So that's going to be my team there. I've got... Latios, Mega, Heatran, Milotic, Mandibuzz, Amoongus, Weavile, Tapu Lele, Kartana, Swine, Sock, Swoobat, and that'll be it. If you guys got any predictions, any comments, anything for the team, just let me know in the comment section below. That's me for this video. I want to thank you guys for watching. Have yourselves a good night.